Oh, what is going on, everybody? Hello! It is Pixel Partners here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Spirit of Justice, the DLC case when we left off. We're now actually going to investigate the crime about scene. about time travel. Exactly. We're now here where all the chaos happened, apparently. Which is uh, ironic, because Maya's here. Yes, and we now have Larry out of the fucking way. Thank God. So <laughs> Thank you, Edgeworth, for doing that. <laughs> thank you so much, buddy. But now we're going to go ahead and we talk to Emma about everything, so we're going to just look around this place a little bit, including this blimp on the top. It's a hot air balloon. Blimp. Oh, or yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's a hot air balloon, not a blimp. A blimp. We're on a blimp right yeah. now, actually. So a symbol of humanity's ambition to take the, to take the disguise. It's kind of a romantic notion, don't you think? Yeah. But I just notice it doesn't seem to be tied up to the ceiling all that well. Not at all. I'm sure it's fine. Please don't let it fall on my head. Just don't <laughs> walk underneath it. Like this? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, almost there. There we go. I'm trying to get used to this new control scheme that I have. I don't remember how it worked two years ago, but this works enough. A model airplane. Perfect decoration for an airline company wedding. And a propeller plane like this sends... Sends? Lens. lens the room <laughs> a great old-timey feel Ooh, i'd love to see the steel samurai fly plane like this can you picture it a steel samurai zipping through the clouds over the over new old tokyo if sprocket aviation ever becomes a sponsor of the show i could see it happening why didn't i think of that i think i'll go suggest the idea to them later but please at least wait until after the trial is over no <laughs> when all the drama is done and over with this is very important nick uh, where is, where is this is the back of this door or whatever that is? Just a symbol there. Oh, we're actually looking at a tape. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, I'll it's, look at it that. It looks like the place where the bride and the groom sit. Yeah. What about the table? It's a box. This must be where the time machine was placed. Can't believe that such a beautiful memento was used for murder. It's just awful. Nick! <laughs> we may have, we have to prove Ellen's innocence no matter what it takes. I agree. We can't let this go down at the list as the saddest flying wedding reception in history. <coughs> and I what mean, the, uh, no table? matter what it takes. Uh, uh, oh, okay. I mean, my days of false evidence are done, but oh. this is the sweetheart <laughs> table where the bride and groom sit. Where they gorge themselves on the wedding feast, you mean? <laughs> yeah, let's go with that, Maya. Listen, I'd be too nervous to eat in front of a bunch of guests like this, though. They say that newlyweds are usually really busy during the reception, you know. They have to greet and talk with all the guests that came and give their blessings. They don't actually get all that much time to enjoy their dinner. Aw, oh, I wouldn't be able to stand that. I can't imagine having a huge feast right in front of me and not being able to eat it. I know. They say brides tend to have an especially hard time because of their wedding dresses. But those tight corsets squeezing their waist, they can barely eat a bite. Really? Sounds more like wedding receptions are absolute torture. I guess food still wins out of a romance in Maya's book. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> All right, and then whatever the fuck this thing is, just like a, 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 a so that's the Vista deck out there. Oh, so is that, he's talking no, about like work. weddings and receptions and stuff, and I'm like, we're gonna have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I bet the view is amazing, but I guess it must also kind of freak you out, huh, Nick? Yeah, kind of. So you're like really well, afraid of heights and stuff. No surviving a fall from way up here. It's a giant deck, also. It is. <laughs> I think that about does it for this area. Okay. What about the? What about the? Oh my what god! What's it, it called? called again? I was just about to. I'm a gonna pegamoo go. Pegamu or something. Yeah, what, what Pegamu. I think is what it's called. That's the. Or I have to go to page three. The Pegamu, yeah. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I can't believe that's a real that's thing. That's an easy thing to, you know, remember. Cause yeah. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> wow, look at the horns on this flying bovine. It must be a bull. He's made it through the ceremony in one piece. I look at those wheels. I bet he can be rolled around rather easily, too. Yeah, I bet it would be quite a hassle if he had to lift and carry him everywhere. This is what the backside looks like. What's that by the bottom of his tail? A wheel handle? Oh. I had a feeling. It's like a oh, I get horse. it. This way they can get inside to change the light bulbs. I see they left the wheel handle on the inside on unpainted. Guess they figure nobody will see it, so why bother? It makes sense to cut costs where you can. That's going to be evidence. Well, overall, I can't say I see anything strange about this thing. But... 
I think it's important because someone there's the, can fit in there. Well, there's the one down here, which I think this is the one that um, the victim fell out of. Because mm. Ellen said she was pushing like the light fixture thing, and it fell oh. over, and the body toppled out, which makes sense when it's this big. So we can't even say the crime happened here. It probably happened somewhere else. Someone pushed the body inside it. They fucking Trojan horse the victim yeah. into the wedding. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, there it is. This is the lantern the body was found in. Well, it managed to move it quite a ways. Looks like a cow, but it's pretty badly broken. That's not a cow, Nick. That's Pegasus, the flying horse. No way, it's definitely a cow. It's got horns and everything. But look, it has wings. Cows don't have wings. So it's a Pegasus, I tell you. Huh. Oh, I know. That pamphlet sh should tell us. What, what, is, what was it? Let's, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> Apparently, it's called a Pegamo. Uh, I did not see that coming. Yet somehow the name really captures the essence of what this creature is, you know? Huh, that's strange. What is? Well, this Pegamo is definitely a male Pegabull, right? Yeah, I'd say so. What with the horns and all. Okay, well... That Pegamo over there is also a Pegabull. But take a look at the pamphlet. Huh, see? The one on the right says peg a bull, but the other one says peg a cow, a female peg a moo. Oh, I right. I think <laughs> I think one of, I think uh I was supposed to say that part. Yeah. The other one says peg a cow, a female peg a moo. That's weird how it says it there, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. The, the pamphlet goes on to say how they have peg a moos for the happy couple. Huh. So for Ellen's ceremony, there should be a male and female pair of Pegamoos. But for some reason, there are two males here. Maybe somebody made a mistake when they were setting up the room? It's hard to believe a fancy place like this would make that kind of blunder, though. And especially when you have such a rich family that rented it out and will take any details as suing the company for it. Yeah. How do you think they got their riches? <laughs> Lawsuits. That's how the rich work. Did you just let me keep reading and we didn't realize that was a phoenix line or did the thing not say phoenix? Uh, no, I think it said phoenix, but we didn't notice because uh. it seemed like the train of thought was all Maya. Yeah. But in any case, you better check this thing out. Uh, obviously, you have the body outline, but there's a couple other things there that I want to point out. Like little knickknacks. So this is where the body was found. Hmm. Oh. And the first person to find it was Ellen. Emma, what can you tell me about the condition of the body when it was found? Let's see. The victim was apparently hit on the back of the head. Well, that doesn't help. <laughs> Here's a photo of the scene as we found it. Okay. I saw his hand was bloodied. Really? Yeah. His would-be left hand mm. was bloodied. But uh, I want to look at what the hell is that little thing there that's standing out to me. By his left hand? Oh, huh. What do you think this is, Maya? Looks like a flower petal to me. What an unusual shape for a flower petal. You suppose it's from one of the flowers here in the reception hall? No, I don't see a single flower like this at any of the tables. I wonder where it came from. What is that? I don't know. It's not even evidence, but... The handle's bloody. Yeah. And there's also, uh... Oh, that's an interesting fact, actually. Yeah. Was he trying to get out from the inside? That'd be weird, though. Huh. Did this come from the lantern? Ick, it's covered in blood. Maybe it got in there when the killer was putting the body in the lantern? Can you imagine going to open a door and finding the knob covered with blood? That'd be bloody awful, to say the least. Boo! <laughs> oh, come on now. You know you enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, oh, and there's a note here? A no. Or a piece of paper, at least. That is a note. Hey, what's this? Whoa. Ooh, let me take a look! Huh. Grab Ellen when convenient, then send her off from the Vista deck. It's Vista, by the way. Vista. Whatever. There you go. <laughs> Looks like a note outlining the murder plot. Whoever wrote it has a better handwriting than me, but it looks like they wrote it in a rush. And why do you say that? Because the writing is only smudged starting from the middle of each line. That happens when a right-handed person with a slight hook writes in a hurry. I do it sometimes myself when I'm not paying attention to where my hand is in the page. Guess I'll take your word on that, Miss Bad Handwriting Expert. It also <laughs> happens when you're left-handed. 
I know because my brother's left hand and that shit used to happen to him all the time in high school because <laughs> you just write over what you just did so you smudge behind you. You have to hold your pen differently. Uh, hey, even I don't smudge my handwriting this badly. This badly. But still do it. All right, all right. Let's get back to the note. Uh, that note was apparently written by the victim. But why wouldn't he feel the need to write instructions to himself like this? Are you sure the victim wrote it? I sometimes write it up to myself before I go shopping. Potatoes, carrots, onions, flour. Uh, Maya, are you craving curry rice or something? Whoops. <laughs> so, Emma, where's this Vista deck the note mentions? You know it's gonna be curry rice. <laughs> Is that heliport you see right outside the window over there? Oh, that one. The one that says H. <laughs> so you plan on pushing Ellen off from there? What a monster. Okay. All right. That's evidence it's at least. It's so blank over there. There, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Guess that about does it for this lantern. Poor cow, bull, whatever. Okay, so that's everything there. Can we look at any like the tables or anything or uh, anything over here? No, that's all that. That's all that. I need to fix the thing so I can go over here. I believe that's it. So I guess at this point, I'll see if I can present some kind of fancy piece of evidence to Emma and see if you get anything from it. Emma, there's something I can do to help you with that? Apparently not. Actually, I was hoping it would help me move the investigation along. Nope. You're just gonna do the whole why don't you take a break and have a snack -oo. And then she looks so depressed about it. For real, I thought you enjoyed those things. I think it's because we didn't want to <laughs> try it. So she's like, okay. Uh, I wonder if uh... Your, your brain's going. You didn't even hear what I said. <laughs> I didn't, because I'm trying to think of the wow. evidence that can go. I'm sorry. Because obviously we, should, we have to present something to someone to get the story moving along. And Emma's the only person here. Do I, should I repeat what I said? Absolutely. <laughs> that uh, I think the reason why she was sad is because Phoenix said he didn't want to try it. Maybe. She's just like, oh, I thought you'd like this. Exactly. <laughs> so you're sure this is the murder weapon in this case? Positive. And why is that? Is there any blood on it? Hold on. The shape of the victim's injuries and the shape of this clock are the perfect match. I see. I dare say that if somebody were to get knocked over the head with this thing, it's more likely to cut off their future than send them to the past. Ayy. I can't disagree with you there. That sounds like a CSI Miami opening. <laughs> yeah! Okay. Ow. You ever think about the Gloomsbury note? Evan, why? That was <laughs> so loud. Oh, it's fine. It's absolutely unbelievable, and now everyone watching has clicked off the video. Oh, well, they'll be fine. What kind of monster would plan to commit a murder on somebody's happiest day? I take it this means you don't have any significant new leads. No, I'm afraid not. You? I've got nothing. I wish I could be of more help. Well, thanks anyway. I appreciate it. All we can do is keep on keeping on, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think about this broken Pegaball? <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. I know, right? What kind of monster would plan to come in and murder someone's happiest day? I take it this means you don't have any significant new leads. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. You? Oh, I've got nothing. It should be more of help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's well, thanks anyway. I appreciate it. It's literally it. the same. It's literally yep. the same okay. thing. I don't yep. know why you kept going. I thought <laughs> it changed because I thought it was going to be the keep on keeping on instantly, but nothing happened, so. Uh, oh, my it's, God. I. I need, I need new Why does it show the picture there? If because that's usually what it does when it's actually gonna talk yeah, about. Yeah, I guess something. it's because it's actually important evidence to the case. But mm. but then you get something like this, and it's all about the snackoos, baby. It's about the snackoos. <laughs> what? All right. Um, I'm gonna need to look at. Don't we have? Is this? Did this we game have the? Uh, <laughs> do we have the notes of what to do? Go talk to Ellen. Okay. Well, it's still. We did search for evidence in the reception hall. I thought that it would be crossed out by now, but we'll go try and visit Ellen in the detention center. See what Ellen knows about anything. Oh, we shouldn't be Ellen's here Ellen's not here. Never mind. So there's something that we're missing in the reception hall. Even though we've touched everything. That I was able to find. Huh. Super, I forgot how tragic that background music is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. We hit the plane. We can't touch anything over here. We touched that pegable. We touched the table. We touched that. What about the chandelier here? There was nothing for the chandelier. 
Do we go over here? Nope. Nothing for it. Uh, can we go to the Vista deck? Hmm. Nope, that's not on our thing yet. So, uh, what the fuck is going on? Is there any new talking points? Nope. Nope. I don't. I. I. Uh, um. What do you think about Ellen's statement, huh? Nope. Never mind. I don't. I. <laughs> Boy, we're back. You can tell we're back in Ace Attorney because we're absolutely fucking lost on what to do right now, even though. That this like is a, ironically. That sounded like beatboxing. <laughs> this is ironically one of the games where in Dual Destiny and Spirit Justice, you get the notebook to hold your hand and tell you what you're supposed to do next, but I've touched everything. Unless we should go back, back to here. it. Let's take another look at this lantern, shall we? Let's try, because. I mean, maybe we can touch the wheel over here. No, never mind. Uh, um, yeah, we touched that. We touched the flower petal. We touched the bloody handle. What about the thing by the right, uh, right hand? Or was that the note? Oh, uh, that's the note. Oh, that's okay. right there. Yeah, we, uh, we, we did, we did all that. Uh, um, huh. I am at a genuine loss okay. for words. I'm astounded. What about that bowl? Well, that's the or first one we looked just, at. I know. I'm just uh. And it's gonna do that whole no, thing okay. again now. Look what you well, did. Uh, can I fast forward? Nope. Okay. Well, I tried to see if there was something, <sighs> if I could investigate over there or something. I tried my best, man. Yeah, I don't no. understand. <laughs> I genuinely at a loss because I'm pretty sure I've presented every piece of evidence, unless hmm. I literally have like one left that I haven't presented to Emma. He's just like, oh, that's the one that I needed. I, uh, that's usually how it goes. Am I just gonna have to cycle through everything? Oh my god. Emma, look at my badge. No, you already did that. Damn it. <laughs> I was just hoping for something. But you, that's like one of the first things you tried, remember? It would have been the one that I tried yesterday if I did. Yeah. Okay, I we did the pendant. You tried that already. You tried that, I did tried the that, statement. tried that. I did, and I, that. I've literally done yep. everything then. Yeah, you have. I am so confused. I'm at a loss. Hmm. I'll go back to the wedding table, I guess. Um. Um. <laughs> yeah, everything's uh, everything's been touched. I. The Vista deck, uh, the lovers' table, or whatever it was, the one that had the time machine on it. Uh, uh, I'm so confused. Wait, I'm an idiot. Uh, I can rotate in this game. I can rotate. I'm That's not so my fault. good at what I don't I do. have the controller. Nope. I, I'm glad the audience was screaming at me for most of that, thankfully. So it looks oh my like God. Uh, a business That's card Larry. wallet. I wonder whose it is. Hmm. That face looks awfully familiar. Yes. Yes, it does. Unfortunately. <laughs> Guess I'll bring it to him later. God. That's a piece of evidence. I can't wait. Larry, you're the one that did this, aren't you? Uh, it's like leather, but like with the little burnt in design in there. <laughs> God. All right. What about that little steam engine thing back there? It's a fog machine for the reception. Well, that's something. <laughs> oh, I was yawning. I was getting bored of you trying to stare at stuff again. Sorry. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Don't you dare touch it. Aw, spoil sport. That's because I know how you operate. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, that's not boring. Um, okay. Just making sure there's nothing else at this. Oh, those things. Little partitions. It's one big partition screen. Industrial size, even. I bet it'd cause an industrial size mess if it fell over. And that's why you're not allowed to touch it, Maya. <laughs> what? Then who's going to test how stable it is? Just leave it alone, please. Oh, Maya. Yeet. I went the wrong way. Boop. What are you doing? Boop. Cool. Um, so what are we gonna find over here? There's the another one. fog machine. Everything is oh, so we can go up to this one. It's a fog machine. One of these it during the reception. Oh! Hey Nick, go stand over there for a sec. Um, why? Just because! Now go! Uh alright. I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> oh boy. Fogmaster 9000, on! Maya, no! Huh? Aw, nothing happened. Looks like it won't work without some dry ice. 
Darn it! All I want to do is surround you in a thick cloud of smoke. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, that's a piece of evidence, though. Interesting. Very interesting. Can I look at it at all? Nope, we're backing away. Never mind. That's going to be everything, I suppose. Okay. At least we made progress now. Ugh. Well, I guess that just about does it for the crime scene. Hey, Nick! Yes? I want to see what the rest of the... I want to see the rest of the airship. Might as well since we're here. True. We might even run into some of the other people involved in the case. Hopefully not later. Whoa! Hello! Look at this uh, dude. Like, how long has that, been guy, that, that guy been standing there? I didn't even notice him until just now. Excuse me, are you with Sprocket Aviation? I love his design. Okay. All right. Hey. Huh? Nick, he wrote something on that paper airplane. I guess we're supposed to read it then? Huh. Let's see here. Uh, get out, intruders. Well, that was a rather cold welcome. Mr. Wright, Maya, meet the lone son of the president of Sprocket Aviation. Soren Sprocket. I knew it! <laughs> or to put it another way, the future president of Sprocket Aviation. Also the groom? <laughs> so he's Ellen's fiance? He is handsome. <laughs> Homie, look at him go. Well, look at him go. <laughs> Homie. And he's gone. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's kind of an eccentric. That's putting it lightly. <laughs> I hear he's the genius inventor behind many of Sprocket Aviation's business successes. An inventor, huh? Yep. He even designed this airship. It's pretty impressive. Nick! This is no time to be standing around gawking. We have to go after him. We need to ask him some questions about Ellen. Oh, er, right. Like he was heading outside. If he'll answer us. <laughs> he just writes all the answers down oh, on a piece no. of paper before throwing it at us. All oh, that animation plays every single time will be here forever. <laughs> it's like, just hand it to me. You don't have to throw it. You'll throw it at some random person. You'll find <laughs> the dog and the dog will eat it. And I'll never see what you said. Just uh, hand it to me. No, he designs it so it flies specifically. <laughs> there he, he is. a little propeller. Look. I know. It's great. I want that. Excuse me. Could we talk to you? Bro. Excuse me. Do you mind if I ask you what you're doing? <laughs> he sure is riding up a storm. Be one word. <laughs> oh, he's talking now. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, God, no! he's going. Uh, hold, hold on. Hold, yeah, hold, 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 hold. Oh, hold. shit. No, he's just. No, let's just see what he has to say about it. So let's just try this again <laughs> since he started talking on his own. It is possible if an enormous change in mass could be detected that observed at the observation point, then theoretically matter can retain its form even as it crosses the event horizon. Oh, well, are you speaking English now? <laughs> but buddy? I would think he would talk with a lot less emotion than that. I don't know. <laughs> he looks Excuse so serious. Excuse me, but we'll be representing Ellen in court tomorrow. So, could we ask you about the case? He's doing equations. <laughs> <laughs> and there it goes. Oh boy. Got it! Ha. Ow! What's in my <laughs> eye? Never mind. What, what the? Not interested. It's just two words. Not interested? How can you say something like that? This is about your fiance. She's under arrest, you know. Oh me. Hey. <laughs> The diameter of the airship is approximately 80 feet. The amount of energy necessary to move matter compromised and the amount of mass is... He's off in his own little world. I... I can't believe he just said that he's not interested in talking about his own bride's arrest! We'll just have to talk on his level then with something he might be interested in. Do we have anything about... Hey, what about, do planes do? <laughs> do we have anything about theoretical physics on our hands, huh? Oh, or the freaking that. The, 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 the time the, thing. The, the, the gear. Ellen's yeah. pendant. What are the pendant, if not the time, the, 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 uh, the blimp. Or the, yeah, no, let's just call the time machine the little clock. Could you take a look at this? Oh. Is that Ellen's? 
Ellen told us that she traveled through time during the incident. She said it happened after she made a wish on this pendant. You mean to say you two are Ellen's lawyers? Yes, I just told you that a minute ago. Sorry, I was lost in thought. Oh, I, I, he wasn't even listening? Oh boy. It's not at all what I expected, based on Ellen's gushing testimonial anyway. He is handsome though. Well, we've got something new to go off of. Will you tell us anything now? We'd like to ask you about Ellen's case, if you don't mind. I don't know a thing about it, so why don't you go ask the police? In other words, not interested. <laughs> this guy is the worst. Now I feel sorry for poor Ellen. In that case, can I ask you about how Ellen traveled through time? Go on. <laughs> Guess that got your attention. <sighs> so, is time travel really even possible? Yes, it is possible. Alrighty then. At the same time, it is also impossible. The pen I gave Ellen is not supposed to operate as a time machine by itself. What do you mean? <laughs> the timekeeper, that clock we had displayed in the reception hall. That is the body of the time machine. The pen is simply a part. That clock was the murder weapon, wasn't it? But it's a time machine, too? What Ellen experiences is akin to traveling down a road by car key. Physically and metaphysically, it should be impossible. Huh. Unless... Maybe the quantum system inside the pendant somehow accidentally interfered with the natural flow of the fourth dimension. I... I... We're losing <laughs> him again. Maybe we better ask him some more about the time machine before he's fucking gone. <laughs> so you've been researching time travel, have you? You can see the space-time continuum would be man's ultimate mean of travel. Time travel is a mode of transportation? Since the dawn of time, man has developed multifarious methods of transportation. Transportation. Horses, steam engines, gas engines, airplanes, spaceships. But they're all fundamentally similar in that they can constitute three-dimensional movement. Travel through the space-time continuum would shift mankind into a new paradigm. Bless you. <laughs> I don't know why, Nick, but I'm getting awfully sleepy all of a sudden. Uh, she said, I don't why. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. All right. <laughs> For generations, sprocket aviation has advanced the development of transportation. Therefore, it's only natural that I would research time travel as man's sex great leap. Huh. Oh, 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 is he done? What exactly does all that stuff he was saying mean, Nick? Well, basically, it's like taking a hamburger joint and adding a drive through to it, you know? I get it. It's the same burger, but with a quicker and more efficient delivery system. So what Sorn really wants to do is launch humanity into the future. <laughs> oh my god. Launch, not lunch. But do you really believe that time travel is possible? Well, it becomes truly impossible when man stops daring to believe. Besides, time travelers do exist, you know. But you wouldn't understand. What? <laughs> Did you hear that, Nick? Time travelers really do exist! All I know is Soren isn't the easiest guy to wrap your head around. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like the way he talks. It, it's full of hope for the future. Hope? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you come from? <laughs> He's more passionate than I thought, too, when it comes to inventions, anyway. Yeah, his apparent lack of concern for Ellen is troubling, though. So I hear that the rest of the Sprocket family was opposed to your marriage? What are your thoughts on that? You might not talk about that. I... Oh. That's gonna be somebody else. Master Soren? Whoa! Oh, I... I'm trying to... Th Sephiroth? <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Um... <laughs> it's time for the meeting on next term's project. What is this? Daydreaming about your inventions again? <laughs> you are the future president, so you must consider the business side, too. It's Tut-Tut, by the way. Tut-Tut. It is I. I found Soren. Send the car over at once. I is that supposed to be a cell phone? But steampunk? I'm not interested. Oh, Master Soren, you, you do give me quite the headache at times. In any case, your attendant is waiting. Please go to him now. Little bitch. 
Excuse me, but who are you? Oh, where are my manners? My name is Pierce Nicardi. Please call me Pierce. I'm the Sprocket family butler. And Nick, a butler! I didn't know they actually still existed. I thought they were just on TV and stuff. And who might you be if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I'm Phoenix Wright, Ellen Wyatt's lawyer. And I'm his assistant, Maya Fay. I'm a spirit medium. Oh, so it is you. I'm most grateful for you for taking on Miss Ellen's defense. You have my sincerest thanks. D don't mention it. So, hey, speaking of the case... Uh, oh, one moment, please. Oh, would you look at the time? <laughs> it's time for me to go. Wow, what a beautiful pocket watch! Oh, this is just a bit of a good luck charm. It's one expensive good luck charm. Wait, what's but I guess inside? it makes sense, knowing the time is pretty important on his line of work. There's this little star thing there. Huh. So I guess that pocket watch is as important to him as my attorney's badges to me. There's another time before I must attend to Master Swan again. Why not come to Sprocket Manor? Huh? You mean, to Soren's home? It's took appreciation for taking on Miss Ellen's defense. I would like to, to serve you some delicious tea and refreshments. Oh boy, Nick, a fancy high society tea party with high class snacks and everything! That means there's no burgers or it's not high class, you realize that, right? And what about the investigation? Are you kidding? What better place to investigate than Soren's house? I don't know. Do you really think his house is going to have any new leads? We'll get away from the birds. Of course it will. Well, you're not wrong on that one. <laughs> See, we take the butler up on his kind offer and go to Soren's place. All right. All right. You win. Nick, free food. Fancy food. Very good. Sprocket Manor, then. Free fancy food. And we're going to Sprocket Manor. <laughs> Next time. Oh, boy. This is... This is something. We get to go to a fancy place. Yes. Yeah, what's going on? I, 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 watch it gonna just be have, like a rundown shit. Are they going to give us little <laughs> finger sandwiches with the, with the I hope so. They're little, little tiny triangle, wieners. The, no, the triangle. Little triangle cut sandwiches. With like no crusts on them. Yeah, they cut off the crust. They're really fancy. Fan there's like egg salad and there's ones that are just like, but it's the egg salad that has like lettuce. <laughs> I know what you but mean. But that's the fancy kind. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. I'm hungry now.